praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for clicking on this video, guys. If you clicked on it, I believe you're watching it for a reason. It's going to bless you. It's going to edify. It's going to encourage you in Jesus' name. So today we're going to talk about spirit-led evangelism. Spirit-led evangelism. This is of the utmost importance. Amen. So turn with me to your Bibles, if it please you, to Acts chapter 8. And we're going to look at a great example of what it means to be led by the Spirit whilst evangelizing, whilst preaching and teaching and sharing the Word of God. So in Acts chapter 8 verse 4, it reads, Therefore they that were scattered abroad, sorry, verse 3, it says, As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, and were healed, and there was great joy in that city. So recap, just give you a little synopsis, a little blurb. So you got uh, Paul, formerly known as Saul, wreaking havoc upon the church, right? Persecution coming against the saints in Jerusalem. So they scatter abroad. And now Philip, the evangelist, is down in Samaria preaching the kingdom of God, right? Preaching the gospel. And we see that he's not only preaching and teaching the word of God, but there's, uh, there's, there's signs, miracles, and wonders confirming the word, backing up the, 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 the preaching of the word of God. That's what the gospel is, right? I mean, we see this in, in, in the Great Commission. He says that they went and they preached everywhere, and the Lord was with them, confirming the word with signs following. So evidence that the Lord is with you and he's working with you is, is there signs following, confirming the preaching of the word. Amen? So we see that unclean spirits, people are getting delivered from demons, people that were in wheelchairs, now they're walking, the deaf are hearing, the blind are seeing, there's, there's evidence of, of the Holy Ghost confirming what you're teaching and preaching is actually the truth. And he'll do that by signs, miracles and wonders preceding or coming after the word of the Lord, just like Jesus preached and taught his disciples when he sent them out two by two, he said, and as you go, preach, saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you receive, freely you give. So it's not just talking, right? It's not just lip service. It's not just preaching and teaching because that, that's the starting point. But then after that, there's what is there? There's demonstration of the spirit and of the power. There's, there's signs, miracles, and wonders. There's evidence that, hey, God is actually here. God is with you and he's moving, right? Through healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead. So when we go and we preach the word, there should be there should be signs, there should be manifestations that God is working with us, right? There should be answered prayers, there should be souls getting saved, there should be testimonies, there should be conviction, you know what I mean? People are being convicted of sin and righteousness and judgment to come. Jesus Christ should be glorified. All these things are signs that, that God is actually with you, that God is moving, right? So this is something we, we, we definitely need to see in the church today. That's something that is lacking you know, many people have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. There's just a lot of preaching, a lot of talking, but that was only one part of Jesus' ministry. A whole not majority of other Jesus' ministry was demonstrating the kingdom of God, healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead, right? So, and that's what Paul preached. Paul preached, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in my speech, and my preaching, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of the power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So God wants to see the Holy Ghost moving with power, right? Because that's what make, makes people put their faith in God and not in men. It's not just by some excellency of speech of your intellectualism and your, your worldly wisdom, but it's actually, oh, whoa, I'm having encounters. I'm having experiences. God is real. There, there's prophecy. There's um, answered prayers, there's miracles, all these sorts of things, right? That actually people can taste and see that the Lord is good. But that's getting into another whole, another kettle of fish. But let's keep it moving. Let's keep it going. So we see spirit-led evangelism. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we want to be led by the Spirit in everything we do. That means in evangelism. That means in prayer. That means in marriage. That means in ministry. 
everything. We're to be spirit led, right? So evangelism is a big one. It's a big key. That's where we're going to see the fruit, right? Because it's no longer us trying to perform and make an outcome, but it's just hearing and obeying what the Holy Spirit wants to do and having his outcome. And that's where the most fruit is. Amen. So Philip went down to Samaria, preached the word of God, whole, whole city, whole crowd got saved, right? And then you go down and what happens in the same chapter? Verse 26, right? The Ethiopian eunuch. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for the worship. I'm not going to finish reading it off. You can read it off. I'm sure you, you know the story of the Ethiopian eunuch, but what happens? You know, he gets saved, he baptizes him, and then Philip gets transported, gets teleported away. So a key here is to not trust in our own ways, but to trust in the Lord's ways, because God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We could think, right, Every time I do evangelism or I witness or I preach the gospel, <clears throat> I have to be in front of a large crowd, be in front of a city. I mean, that makes the most sense, right? You want to reach the most people. But what's the most effective key is that we're led by the Spirit, that we're hearing God and then we're obeying what He tells us. Because we see one point here, right? In Acts chapter 8, Philip preaching to a whole city, right? A multitude, a numerous amount of people. And then you flash to the next scene and you're just preaching to one soul. So that's why we always need to trust in God's wisdom, trust in His way, hear from God, be led from God. He heard from God, right? And that's He was instructed to go up to Him, right? It says that. Where does it say that? It says that... Um, the angel of the Lord spoke to him in verse 26. And then in verse 29, then the Spirit said unto Philip, so the Holy Ghost told him to go and talk to the Ethiopian eunuch. So the power of hearing from God and obeying from God, we might just think, oh, it always has to be in this form or fashion. Lots of people. When God's like, no, I want you just to stop for the one. I just want you to find that one Ethiopian eunuch because if you find that right one, that Ethiopian eunuch, that could get a whole city saved. That could get a whole country, a whole region saved. Amen. It might just be one person in a household and they get their whole family, they get their whole friends, they get their whole neighborhood, they get their whole community. So we always trust in God's plan. Spirit-led evangelism is crucial, is key. I'll, I'll give you a testimony of, of what God's been doing in my life because I know it's going to help someone. I know it's going to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I used to, when I was doing, um, always doing my street outreach, I would always think, you know, oh, it always has to be on a microphone preaching in front of a crowd of the most amount of people. And the Lord showed me this scripture and he taught me that, hey, it's about being led by me about what I want to do, not what you want to do, Jet. And I, I realized a lot of the time I would actually, I had opportunities, I had, I had divine appointments, days of visitations, doorways of utterances set up and I would walk straight past it. And I'd miss what the Holy Spirit was saying unto me because I was so tunnel vision and focused like, oh, no, I have to go preach. I have to go be in front of this big crowd. And I was missing opportunities left, right and center. But praise God, I'm, I'm, I'm growing in, in maturity and wisdom and, and hearing and being spirit led to where it's like, like, for example, you know, not too long ago, I was getting ready. You know, I, I was all prayed up. I was all in the word up, spirit filled, ready to go out and preach on the streets and God had a different plan. There was a man at the library and, you know, making friends with him. And we just sat down and we just had a conversation and his heart was just so open. He was asking so many questions about the gospel. He was so hungry, he was so thirsty. Spent like about four hours, over four hours, just witnessing, just, just sharing, just preaching to him. And then after it was like, oh, well, I've got peace now. I don't need to go out and preach. That's what, you know, God had for me that day. That's what he wanted me to do. So, yeah, the importance of just being spirit-led and obeying, hearing and obeying what God wants to do. That's what's going to bring the fruit. That's what's going to bring the outcome. So I pray this bless you. I know this bless you if you're watching this in the mighty name of Jesus and be in store for the next evangelism episode. Bah.